change of plans. Not gonna make the brackets just yet. As you can see, I have whipped up a little stand. I just kind of want to see the axle sitting under there. So, what you see, you can see our bracket here that I made when I just kind of roughly threw the axle up under here. Now, right behind that is our factory bump stop. Um, so, what I need to do here so I can kind of eyeball, get an idea of where things need to fit, where I'm going to need to trim some stuff, like, you know, right under there. I'm going to have to trim a little bit of that. I have to trim a little spot right here eventually. Uh, so, here and there over the last couple weeks, I've been kind of chipping away at uh, some of the old dirt and crud and crap that was on that cross beam under there. You can see it's nice and clean now. Um, so, got that all clean and wiped off. Um, next step, I'm going to cut this piece of plate off of here, and then I'm going, I'm going to get, take the, uh, bump stop off from behind that. Now, basically the center of the bump stop is going to be where the center of our axle location will be. So once we get that bump stop off, we'll mark that. Also, moving back here, got to clean all this crap the rest of the way up. You'll see right here is our factory leaf spring mount for the rear of the leaf spring, for the rear shackle. I'm actually going to reuse this. Um, we're, I'm going to do a radius arm set up on the front of this truck. I've given a lot of thought, and I think with the amount of space that I have to work with and uh, the length of the arms and whatnot, I think that's going to give me the best setup. Now, in order to do that, you see right here, that's our old sway bar mount um, where the sway bar would mount in and, and it would drape down. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to reuse some of that. I am going to reuse this mount. I'm going to have to rebuild the front half of the body mount a little bit. That's not a big deal. And uh, I'll make a bracket that comes out here so we can have a double shear mount instead of a single shear. Um, for right now, first things first, we're going to get that plate off of there, get that uh, bump stop off from behind it, then we'll mark the center line of our axle, clean the frame up right there, and uh, kind of get a good look at everything and get it marked. I've already got the other side done, so we'll just zoom over there right quick and uh, check it out, see what it looks like here. Let's see. <laughs> Bling. There it is. So you see I've got our our center line mark where our axle will go there. Frame's kind of cleaned up there. Got her all cleaned up back here. Got that mount out. Got all the old crud off the frame and everything. Now, with this axle set, sitting in here, I'm going to take, once I clean the other side up, I'm going to put a piece of string down that red line. I'm going to tape it up. I'm going to tie a nut on the end of it. That way it will locate exactly where the center line of my axle needs to be. Then I will also take and I will make, I'll draw a line and I'll mark my center line on my, my axle here. That way I can locate my axle side to side and have the axle centered in the truck. Then I'm going to slowly let the, let the truck down. I'll take it off the, off the locks on the lift. I'm going to slowly let it down over top of the axle here so that we can see where our axle is going to contact and get an idea for how much clearance we have to the oil pan with the new center of the axle built. Uh, because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to see notch the front of this uh, frame just a little bit. Hopefully not much, hopefully just maybe two inches. And when I do that, I'm not just going to see notch the frame right here. I'm actually going to carry it all the way over and I'm going to tie it into that cross member right there. That way we'll have plenty of clearance and it'll be extra super duper strong. So next thing I got to do now is get in here and uh, clean off this uh, passenger side of the frame and get it all cleaned up where it looks like this one. I'm not going to make you watch that because it's really boring and it's fairly time consuming and I think you get the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then we'll come back. All right, so just to kind of give you a visual of what I got going on, I got the other side, I got everything all cleaned off like I was talking about. Um, so the axle is just kind of, uh, I just kind of eyeballed it side to side for right now. I did make a mark and mark the center of the, uh, of the axle itself. I've got to find the center on the truck. I've got to figure out what my, what my total width is. That way I know how to center it on the axle. <clears throat> but I, I bought it for now. Uh, now I, you'll see I got my strings hanging with my nut tied on the end here. I've got my axle set at three degrees. Remember, like I said, we've got, it, we've got our rake, our angle of rake. I've got that set at three degrees. So next I've got to come in. I've got to draw a line straight down the center on the top of my axle here on each side. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Now, this is another one of those things. I'm sure there's probably some really cool way to do it that's probably easier than how I'm about to do it, but this is how I do it. So if you know an easier way, well, that's great for you, but this is what's gonna work for me. So you got just a square, no frills, no thrills here. I know my axle's three and a half inches. Um, 
I know it's uh, three and a half inches across, so I'm looking at an inch and three quarter cross section. So I'm gonna put this guy up here, and whenever it reads zero, come on, ah, right there. All right, so whenever it reads zero, I'm going to make my mark at one and three quarters. Make my mark at one and three quarter on top of the axle there. Obviously I'm gonna make two of them, that way I can come back and draw a straight line through the both of them here in just a minute. This little magnetic dude right here has turned out to be extremely handy. Uh, zero right there, we're good. Mark him again here. Now, so I got my two marks made, so now I can just take my straight edge, draw a line straight down the top of the axle, do that on both sides, and then I'll know exactly where that nut needs to fall so I have my true center line of my axle. This will also help whenever I'm doing my bag brackets and stuff here very soon as well. So now I can tell, probably gonna have to come back, maybe do something different than just the nut. I don't know, I'll have to see. I can see where the string comes down and I'll be able to kind of see cross section there. If I get it off by a millimeter or two, it's not really a big deal because I will have adjustment in my, uh, um, in my arms as well, my hind joints, but this is just a way to try to get it as close as you can initially. It's good to have adjustment, but if you go a little bit out each step of the way, if you miss your measurement, you know, and you're okay with missing it by an eighth of an inch every time all the way through, by the time you get done, you're way out. You know, you're half, three quarters of an inch out when you might not have that much adjustment. So, I always like to try to just get it as close as I possibly can with whatever tools that I have. That way, if I miss it by half a millimeter here, half a millimeter there, if when it's all said and done, I'm a couple of sixteenths of an inch out, that's no big deal. That's that, that's not even a one full thread on a hind joint. So I'm in good shape there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll get our, our axle centered side to side, and uh, you know we'll move on from there. Well, so here you see is how I centered it. Basically, I just got two pieces of wood, nice and flat. I know they're good and true. I take them uh, right along the line that I made on the frame that's dead straight. I ran the corner of it right down where it's just barely touching the axle right on the top of the line that I made. Did that on both sides. I measured from uh, a nice fixed point on the inside of the knuckle here to the face of this. Got it centered up on either side. Uh, I'm going to throw my... Um, my string with my nut back on it and make sure that we're still centered front to rear. Then we'll be ready to start raising lower the truck up and down and start seeing where we need to clearance things and where we need to get moving. Yay. Well, thank you Ford for your retarded ass engineering. Y'all check this stuff out right here. So I built all my stuff on center. Now look at that cross member right there. Does that look like that thing's centered? No, I'm not holding the camera crooked. You can see it's, it's different over here. Well, look at this side from the bottom. Do you see how much room and clearance there is? There is nothing anywhere near that axle. What a great design. I mean, I did a fantastic job on that. The whole design on the axle came out really nice. Everything like I figured. But look at this crap. Look here, it is actually almost hitting the motor mount bolt. Let me get you around here to the other side here. Look, I mean, it's like pretty much touching it right now. There's almost no room for anything. Get this stupid wire out of the way. I mean, even, I mean, that's a motor mount bolt. I'm pretty sure, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's a stud from the motor mount. So, and then even if it weren't for that, even if that bolt wasn't there, I could come up, well, let's see. I can barely get my finger in there. So maybe another inch, even if that bolt was not there. So 
I'm not real sure what I'm going to do about that. I mean, yeah, I'm a little lower than I was before, but you know, not really what I wanted. I mean, I got the clearance on the oil pan that I wanted. Do you see that? I mean, that's just at a cross member. Tons of clearance, but I'm going to have to get a new plan here. I'm not real sure what I'm going to do right now. Kind of got an awful lot of work tied up in it right now. I don't want to get three quarters of an inch lower or something like that. So I don't know. I'm going to go to the drawing board and uh, figure something out, and uh, I'll let you know what I come up with. Well, here we are, back on the table, as you can see. So, I took a bunch of pictures and looked at everything under there real good. And believe it or not, the entire motor is set toward the passenger side in this truck. I have no idea why, but I'm sure Ford has their reasons. Seems stupid to me, but whatever. They didn't ask me. So, what I did is I kind of uh, took some measurements while I was under there. And... Uh, laid out what I think will clear. So you can see right here, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna cut out this section. I'm gonna stick it back over there, stick it underneath it, let it back down, see if I have enough clearance and everything to do what I wanna do. If I get enough clearance to do what I wanna do, I'm, I should be able to essentially just take this and uh, cut a notch in it right here, flip it over and put it right here. Um, and that sh should actually fit and lay in there just right. Um, if not, I'll make a new piece if I have to, but it would be really nice if this would just kind of fit like that. And then I can just put a cap back over this and right here. I'm not super thrilled about that because I had it the way that I wanted. Um, I had it the way that I wanted this way, but I mean, it is what it is, you know. I guess I probably should have just looked at it a little closer before I built it. I just assumed that everything was on center. It's the first, I've built a lot of vehicles. It's the first time I really run into that where it's just everything's off center like that. So. That's where I'm at now, so I'm going to drill me a little hole right here, and then that way my plasma cutter won't blow back on me and mess my tip up, and then I'll cut this back out along this line, and we'll go from there. Well, here we are back under it. You can see I got my, my little boards taped in place. So I'm about to go ahead and measure it up and uh, center it up and then we'll let it down and see see if the cutting it out made the difference that I need so I can start the rebuild of the axle. So let's get to centering this guy up. We well, see in a perfect world, I would sit this right back in the stand because uh, I have my son help me get this thing off of the stand last time. And uh, we made sure not to move the stand at all, but I've had to put it back on here by myself and this thing is really heavy. So, and I didn't think to mark where the axle was actually sitting on the stand before so that I could just sit it back in here and it would still be centered. So I'm gonna have to measure it, kind of bump the stand back around to get it where it's all centered again. Hopefully it's not too far off, but I mean, if it is, I'll just deal with it. It's not the end of the world. I could have thought, probably thought this through a little bit better initially though. So right now we're at four and five eighths over here. Ugh. Let's see what we got over here. We are at, we're at four and a sixteenth over here. So definitely got to come this way. All right, so watch this. Right here, it's highly scientific. All right, pretty good little move. Use the old crock to the stand there. Now we're at four and three eighths. Perfect. Ooh, that 
felt like just the right amount of tappage. Oh yeah, that's gonna get it four or five feet. <laughs> Perfect. And I can already tell you right now, it looks a lot, lot, lot better. So I'm going to take these two pieces of wood off and then we're going to let this lift down a little bit, see what we get. See if I can uh, position you a little bit better so we can see it come down here. <clears throat> Well, on the other side, I guess the concrete's probably a little bit not square, but on the other side, the axle is touching the frame, and right here, I got about a half an inch, and I've got probably three inches or more um, before the axle even gets near the oil pan. I'd probably say two and a half inches. There's nothing on this side of the cross frame that's gonna hit anything. Over here, Got plenty of clearance. Oh yeah. Might be able to get what I want without even having to C notch this thing, honestly. I don't know that I'm gonna go to the trouble of C notch the frame for one more inch here. I mean, granted, let's be real, one inch is a lot, but get you I'll show you what I'm what I'm looking at now. So now, so like I said, this side's just a little bit higher. I can barely fit my finger in there. Actually, I can't really fit my finger all the way in there. So we got maybe a half inch of clearance there. And you can look and see the clearance it's got to the oil pan right there. Tons of clearance. We're running through there. Clearing the cross member nicely. Cruise over to this other side here. Let's see. Now, there's the big payday. Plenty of clearance everywhere. And you can see we are pretty much touching right there. You got maybe, a I don't know, an eighth of an inch gap. Not much. But plenty of clearance down through there to the oil pan. Let's check out the front, see what we're looking like. So that lip right there, I may, ooh, I want to focus on my finger there. I may trim this back just a touch, just to make sure it never hits anything. But I mean, other than that, I'm good. See, I had marked it because I was thinking about that I was gonna need to, uh, you know, maybe put a C-notch in right here. Um, so I'll probably sit down and I'll do the math and I'll see how much I gained right here. Uh, how much axle height I gained with bringing it up. If I don't really need to see notch it, I won't just because that's a lot of work to have to go through. If it's, if I'm only going to gain another three quarters of an inch to an inch, I don't know that I will. Um, if it's going to be something substantial, then I will, but, uh, I don't know. I'm going to just wait and see and, uh, I'll take some measurements here. Um. And then we'll come back when I've got my plan formulated and I'll tell you what I've come up with. But I'm really happy with that. Cutting that out got me what I needed now. So I'm just going to have to rebuild that side of the axle, which sucks. But I'll figure it out. That's what I do. All right. Well, new day. Here we go. So you see I got some white markings up here. So you can see where that's kind of coming down over my frame. So I'm going to have to cut some of this out. It's just my initial cut. I don't know how much I'm going to have to cut out to clear my airbag mount and all that. But I'm going to start with this right here. I'm just going to kind of roughly chop it out of there with a uh, cutoff wheel. And then I think I've decided that I am going to go ahead and C-notch this part of the frame. Not a lot. I'm actually going to C-notch it high enough so that I can put the bump stop in there. Now, I know most people, they'll just you know set their bags where they can just ride with the bag all the way compressed. And, and that will work just fine. But I am going to put a bump stop in here just in case somehow 
for some reason something were to break or give that way i know it does have a bump stop in here because um if something a bracket were to break and let this thing go all the way up as far as it'll go uh the middle part of this axle would hit the oil pan under there and i do not need that happening because in order to, to fix that oil pan you'd have to pull this engine out and that would just be a well that's just problems i don't want so i'm gonna run this lift back up get the axle out from under here um we're gonna go ahead and start trying to cut that frame cut the frame out there for that c-notch there start getting our metal ready to go for that so my plan will be to cut that out get the metal kind of made tacked up in there uh, with the, um, I'm going to try to use the original bump stops that were on it. I mean, they work just fine from the factory. I don't know why they wouldn't work for what I want to use them for. Um, see if I can't get the, the steel tacked in there, get the new bump stop kind of bolted in, uh, roughly bolted in place, put the axle back under here, then see where we're at from there. We'll get our wheelhouses. We'll get them trimmed out. I am going to go ahead and remove this bracket for the pan hard bar. Um, because pretty much know I'm going to probably have to make a new one of those, but if for nothing else, it just gets it out of my way for right now. It gets another big dirty hunk of metal out of my way where I can work on the next thing. So let's get it up and get this heavy axle back out from under here again. I sure do love lifting that thing. Said no one ever. All right. Well, I hate to do that to you, but unfortunately this one ends right here because the next stage of this build is to see notch the uh, frame rails on the front half of this truck. And uh, I didn't want to kind of get like 15 minutes into it and have to stop. We're already 20 minutes into this video. So uh, just gonna have to start on that during the next one. Uh, this is just one of the many, many problems that I ran into trying to build the front of this truck and get it all built out and do it like I wanted to and have it to come out and do the things that I want to be able to do with it. So, um, you know, just have to you know keep pushing there's a solution for every problem sometimes i just sit there and stare at it for a while <laughs> um really appreciate it if you're still here at this point in the video i really appreciate you riding along with me i uh, really appreciate you supporting the channel and watching views are up subscribers are up i really appreciate all the support from everybody as always if you haven't subscribed by now click that button uh throw me a comment hit me with a like you know um you know help help me make the channel better. If you see something you don't like, you know, hey, post on there, hey man, what, what, what if you didn't do this? Or what if you did that? I mean, you don't gotta be a, you don't gotta be a dick about it, but you know, you can say, hey, I'd like to see more of this. Uh, as always, yes, I know, you would love to see the entire four link done in one episode. It ain't gonna happen. It don't happen like that in real life. It ain't gonna, it don't happen in this shop for damn sure, I promise you that. So, uh, all that being said, thank you for watching. Thank you for staying until the end. Please come back for the next one. We will see you in 70.